7 in the morning, the day is well underway in Sabola Kebala, a village in the Ethiopian highlands west of the capital Addis Ababa. The villagers are self-supporting and depend on agriculture for their livelihood. The village has no shops, no running water and no electricity. But there is a small medical clinic. And for a few weeks, it's also serving as the Volkita Solar Center's mobile headquarters. It's been buzzing with activity here since dawn. Five solar technicians and their boss, Mina Heiler Michael, are preparing the systems that will be installed today. <laughs> Ethiopia is a developing country, and the rural population rarely has access to the national electricity grid. Many people have never even seen a light bulb. Mina Heiler Michael and her technicians want to change that. The 23-year-old traded her life in Addis Ababa for a very simple existence here in the countryside. She wants to help Ethiopia's poor rural population and make their daily lives a bit easier. Haile Michael got her start in solar energy three years ago. She was just finishing training as an electrician when she heard about a new program, a school for solar technicians. The school is the only one of its kind in East Africa. She applied to the program and passed the admission examination. <laughs> Today, she's not only a solar technician, she's a businesswoman as well. She directs one of the first five solar centers in Ethiopia. It's a challenging job. As a woman, she first had to prove herself to the rural population here. The project aims to involve the villagers and get them to pitch in. The people here definitely respect me. I even have special status among the technicians. I tell everyone I don't do any more than my colleagues, but they don't really believe me. They're amazed that I'm even here and that a woman is working under such difficult conditions. Her work here is anything but routine. But she understands the underlying difficulties in the region. The traditional thatched roof huts, called tukuls, are more than seven metres tall. But the distance between the solar module, the battery and the lamps has to be kept to a minimum. A longer cable means lower system performance. She knows the best places to position the lamps, but first she has to convince her customers. She wants the system to work without a hitch and satisfy customers. A short time later, the hut has electric light for the first time ever. I saw it at my neighbours and was completely taken with it. I wanted a solar light just like it so that it would have more light and my children can do schoolwork in the evening. Heile Michael's work is supported by the Solar Energy Foundation under a joint German-Ethiopian initiative. But even though the project is organised by an NGO, the solar units are not charity donations. The families pay for the systems and the technicians' labor. Small home solar systems cost $200. They're financed by microcredits, payable over three years. It's fascinating how simple it is to transform the lives of people here with solar energy. Of course, they do pay for it, but compared to what they spend on kerosene lamps, it's not that much. And then they've got real electric light at home. Seeing their reactions makes me very happy. Haile Michael wants to work for a better future in Ethiopia and is proud of her contribution. Her only regret is that her boyfriend still lives in Addis Ababa. And her boyfriend misses her when Haile Michael spends weeks at a time on the road.